Um, so we all know Ruby, <laughs> and Ruby has these concepts of like case and if, and given those, I, I really don't understand what respond to is doing in like what it's buying us. When we could have basically implemented the exact same thing using case or if and then a method. And I'll show you how that works. This is the generated code for the sample controller, right? We generated a user scaffold and we got respond to do format, format.html don't do anything, and format.json render json. Okay? What this means is if the format is HTML, then do nothing. If the format is JSON, then render JSON. So isn't that a case statement? Like, isn't that exactly the same, logically speaking, as a case statement? Right? I mean, I, I do not understand why they thought they needed to make a method and pass in a block and then do this weird thing with format dot instead of just using a case statement, right? Here's the format. It, it's actually there. Well, the weird thing is it didn't remove two lines. This is, so first of all, number of lines of code does not actually correlate 100% with clarity of code. Sometimes you need to have, add more lines to get more clear. But I've got an answer to that in the next, the next uh, slide, if you, if you will. Um, but just looking at this, this here is doing what this is doing, but just in a much clearer way because we all know Ruby. <laughs> This thing requires us to read the documentation and understand that the respond to method takes a block that in turn takes a parameter that in turn, when you call .html on it, compares the parameter to HTML, but that's what when does. <laughs> like, that's the whole point of when, is it compares the thing with the other thing. Okay, having said that, let me, let's make it fewer lines of code. Remember, when it's HTML, it doesn't actually do anything. So that means that this really isn't a case statement after all, it's just an if statement. Right? If the, if the format is JSON, then render JSON. And it, it, otherwise, don't do anything, and then Rails will figure out and render users, view slash users slash new dot HTML dot ERB. This is actually doing the same thing. And it, let's pretend that params format is not sufficient for identifying the format. What if there are lots of different ways of figuring out what the format is, that it wasn't just passed in as a string in the, that parameter. Well, then we could just have a method that compares the format to JSON, right? That says, if the format was JSON, then do this. That w I bet that there's this, I bet that there's this <coughs> logic, whatever logic there is inside of the respond to method, does, if it does anything more than just comparing two strings, we could have just done that logic in here. And then we could still just use Ruby to do our control flow, right? Okay, that, that's enough about that. Basically, it, it's bizarre to me that whoever thought that this was the right way to do things, like, I don't understand why they thought that was the right way to do things. They just went a little DSL crazy, all right? Because we already have Ruby. Ruby does this. Anyway, so that's, 